Verbas gamapsus is a species of mullein native to Europe, northern Africa, and Asia, and introduced in the Americas and Australia. It is a hairy biennial plant that can grow to 2 meters tall or more. Its small yellow flowers are densely grouped on a tall stem, which grows from a large rosette of leaves. It grows in a wide variety of habitats, but prefers well-lit disturbed soils, where it can appear soon after the ground receives light, from long-lived seeds that persist in the soil seed bank. It is a common weedy plant that spreads by prolifically producing seeds, but it rarely becomes aggressively invasive, since its seeds require open ground to germinate. It is a very minor problem for most agricultural crops, since it is not a very competitive species, being intolerant of shade from other plants and unable to survive tilling. It also hosts many insects, some of which can be harmful to other plants. Although individuals are easy to remove by hand, populations are difficult to eliminate permanently. It is widely used for herbal remedies, with well-established emollient and astringent properties. Mullein remedies are especially recommended for coughs and related problems, but also used in topical applications against a variety of skin problems. The plant has also been used to make dyes and torches. Description Verbascal napsus is a dicotyledonous plant that produces a rosette of leaves in its first year of growth. The leaves are large, up to 50 cm long. The second year plants normally produce a single unbranched stem usually one a Euro 2M tall. In the eastern part of its range in China, it is, however, only reported to grow up to 1.5M tall. The tall pole-like stems end in a dense spike of flowers that can occupy up to half the stem length. All parts of the plants are covered with star-shaped trichomes. This cover is particularly thick on the leaves, giving them a silvery appearance. The species chromosome number is 2N equals 36. On flowering plants the leaves are alternately arranged up the stem. They are thick and decurrent, with much variation in leaf shape between the upper and lower leaves on the stem, ranging from oblong to oblanchiolate, and reaching sizes up to 50 cm long and 14 cm across. They become smaller higher up the stem, and less strongly decurrent down the stem. The flowering stem is solid and 2 a euro 2.5 cm across and occasionally branched just below the inflorescence, usually following damage. After flowering and seed release the stem and fruits usually persist in winter, drying into dark brown, stiff structures of densely packed, ovoid-shaped and dry seed capsules. The dried stems may persist in the following spring or even the next summer. The plant produces a shallow taproot. Flowers are pentamerous with five stamen, a five-lobed calyx tube and a five-petaled corolla, the latter bright yellow and in 1.5 a euro 3 centimeters wide. The flowers are almost sessile, with very short pedicels. The five stamens are of two types, with the three upper stamens being shorter, their filaments covered by yellow or whitish hairs, and having smaller anthers, while the lower two stamens have glabrous filaments and larger anthers. The plant produces small ovoid capsules that split open by way of tube valves, each capsule containing large numbers of minute brown seeds less than a millimeter in size, marked with longitudinal ridges. A white flowered form, V. thapsuserf candicans, is known to occur. Flowering lasts for up to three months from early to late summer, with flowering starting at the bottom of the spike and progressing irregularly upward. Each flower opens for part of a day and only a few open at the same time around the stem. Taxonomy For the purpose of botanical nomenclature, Verbascal Mapsus was first described by Carolus Linnaeus in his 1753 species Plantrum. The specific epithet Thapsus had been first used by Theophrastus for an unspecified herb from the ancient Greek settlement of Thapsos, near modern Syracuse, Sicily though it is often assimilated to the ancient Tunisian city of Thapsus. At the time, no type specimen was specified, as the practice only arose later, in the 19th century. When electotype was designated, it was assigned to specimen 242.1 of Linnaeus herbarium, the only V. Thapsus specimen. The species had previously been designated as type species for Verbascum. European plants exhibit considerable phenotypical variation, 
which has led to the plant acquiring many synonyms over the years. Introduced American populations show much less variation. The taxonomy of Verbascum has not undergone any significant revision since Van Gmaar won quarter of BECK's monographies in the 1930s, with the exception of the work of Arthur Huber Morath, who used informal group in organizing the genus for the floras of Iran and Turkey to account for many intermediate species. Since Huber Morath's groups are not taxonomical, Ma one quarter of BECK's treatment is the most current one available, as no study has yet sought to apply genetic or molecular data extensively to the genus. In Ma one quarter of BECK's classification, V. Thapsus is placed in section Bothros Burmi subsect. Fasciculata alongside species such as Verbascum nigrum, Verbascum lignatus, and Verbascum sinuatum. Equals subspecies and hybrids equals. There are three usually recognized subspecies: V. Thapsus subsp. Thapsus. Type: widespread. V. Thapsus subsp. Crassifolium merb. Mediterranean region and to 2,000 meters in southwestern Austria. Bonia and Leyens. V. Thapsus subsp. Gigantium naman. Spain, endemic. In all subspecies but the type. The lower stamens are also hairy. In subsp crassifolium, the hairiness is less dense and often absent from the upper part of the anthers, while lower leaves are hardly decurrent and have longer petials. In subsp gigantium, the hairs are densely white tomentos, and lower leaves strongly decurrent. Subsp crassifolium also differs from the type in having slightly larger flowers which measure 15 a euro 30 mm wide, whereas in the type they are 12 a euro 20 mm in diameter. Both subsp. gigantium and subsp. crassifolium were originally described as species. Due to its morphological variation, V. thapsus has had a great many subspecies described. A recent revision led its author to maintain V. gigantium but sink V. crassifolium into synonymy. The plant is also parent to several hybrids. Of these, the most common is V. A. semi-album chorball occur in Eurasia, and 3, V. A. canary fritch, V. A. terracol and franching V. A. thapsial, have also been reported in North America. Equals common names equals, V. thapsus is known by a variety of names. European reference books call it Great Mullen. In North America, Common mullen is used while Western United States residents commonly refer to mullen as cowboy toilet paper. In the 19th century it had well over 40 different common names in English alone. Some of the more whimsical ones included Hick Candlewick, Indian Ragweed, Bullock's Lungwort, Adam's Rod, Hare's Beard, and Ice Leaf. Vernacular names include innumerable references to the plant's hairiness, woolly mullen, velvet mullen, or blanket mullen. Beggar's Blanket, Moses' Blanket, Poor Man's Blanket, Our Lady's Blanket, or Old Man's Blanket, and Feltwort, and so on. Some names refer to the plant size and shape, Shepherd's Club, S, or Staff, Aram's Rod, and a plethora of other X's Staff, and X's Rod. The name Velvet Dock, or Mullen Dock is also recorded, where Dock is a British name applied to any broad-leaved plant. Distribution and Habitat Verbascum napsus has a wide native range including Europe, Northern Africa and Asia, from the Azores and Canary Islands east to western China, north to the British Isles, Scandinavia and Siberia, and south to the Himalayas. In Northern Europe, it grows from sea level up to 1850 m altitude, while in China it grows at 1400 euro 3200 m altitude. It has been introduced throughout the temperate world, and is established as a weed in Australia, New Zealand, Tropical Asia, La Ra Copyright Union, North America, Hawaii, Chile, Hispaniola and Argentina. It has also been reported in Japan. In the United States it was imported very early in the 18th century and cultivated for its medicinal and pesticide properties. By 1818, it had begun spreading so much that Amos Eaton thought it was a native plant. In 1839 it was already reported in Michigan and in 1876, in California. It is now found commonly in all the states. In Canada, 
it is most common in the maritime provinces as well as southern Quebec, Ontario and British Columbia, with scattered populations in between. Great Mullen most frequently grows as a colonist of bare and disturbed soil, usually on sandy or chalky ones. It grows best in dry, sandy or gravelly soils, although it can grow in a variety of habitats, including banksides, meadows, roadsides, forest clearings and pastures. This ability to grow in a wide range of habitats has been linked to strong phenotype variation rather than adaptation capacities. Ecology Great mullein is a biennial and generally requires winter dormancy before it can flower. This dormancy is linked to starch degradation activated by low temperatures in the root, and gibberellin application bypasses this requirement. Seeds germinate almost solely in bare soil, at temperatures between 10 degrees Celsius and 40 degrees Celsius. While they can germinate in total darkness if proper conditions are present, in the wild, they in practice only do so when exposed to light, or very close to the soil surface, which explains the plant's habitat preferences. While it can also grow in areas where some vegetation already exists, growth of the rosettes on bare soil is four to seven times more rapid. Seeds germinate in spring and summer. Those that germinate in autumn produce plants that overwinter if they are large enough, while rosettes less than 15 cm across die in winter. After flowering the entire plant usually dies at the end of his second year, but some individuals, especially in the northern parts of the range, require a longer growth period and flower in their third year. Under better growing conditions, some individuals flower in the first year. Triennial individuals have been found to produce fewer seeds than biennial and annual ones. While year of flowering and size are linked to the environment, most other characteristics appear to be genetic. A given flower is open only for a single day, opening before dawn and closing in the afternoon. Flowers are self-fecundating and protogenous, and will self-pollinate if they have not been pollinated by insects during the day. While many insects visit the flowers, only some bees actually accomplish pollination. V. Thapsus flowering period lasts from June to August in most of its range, extending to September or October in warmer climates. Visitors include halictid bees and hoverflies. The hair on lower stamens may serve to provide footholds for visitors. The seeds maintain their germinative powers for decades, up to a hundred years, according to some studies. Because of this, and because the plant is an extremely prolific seed bearer, it remains in the soil seed bank for extended periods of time, and can sprout from apparently bare ground, or shortly after forest fires long after previous plants have died. Its population pattern typically consists of an ephemeral adult population followed by a long period of dormancy as seeds. Great mullein rarely establishes on new grounds without human intervention because its seeds do not disperse very far. Seed dispersion requires the stem to be moved by wind or animal movement. 75% of the seeds fall within 1m of the parent plant, and 93% fall within 5m. Megachylid bees of the genus Anidium use the hair in making their nests. The seeds are generally too small for birds to feed on, although the American goldfinch has been reported to consume them. Other bird species have been reported to consume the leaves or flowers or to use the plant as a source when foraging for insects. Agricultural impacts and control, because it cannot compete with established plants, great mullein is no longer considered a serious agricultural weed and is easily crowded out in cultivation, except in areas where vegetation is sparse to begin with, such as Californian semi-desertic areas of the eastern Sierra Nevada. In such ecological contexts, it crowds out native herbs and grasses. Its tendency to appear after forest fires also disturbs the normal ecological succession. Although not an agricultural threat, its presence can be very difficult to completely eradicate, and is especially problematic in overgrazed pastures. The species is legally listed as a noxious weed in the American state of Colorado and Hawaii, and the Australian state of Victoria. Despite not being an agricultural weed in itself, it hosts a number of insects and diseases including both pests and beneficial insects. It is also a potential reservoir of the cucumber mosaic virus, Erysiphum sicariseum and Texas root rot. 
a study found B. thapsus hosts insects from 29 different families. Most of the pests found were western flower thrips, Lithus species such as the tarnished plant bug, and various spider mites from the family Tetranicidae. These make the plant a potential reservoir for overwintering pests. Other insects commonly found on great mullein feed exclusively on Verbascum species in general or Vthapsus in particular. They include mullein thrips, Gymnatron tetrum and the mullein moth. Useful insects are also hosted by great mullein, including predatory mites of the genera Garlandromus, Typhlodromus and Amblyzius, the minute pirate bug Arias tristicolor and the mullein plant bug. The plant's ability to host both pests and beneficials makes it potentially useful to maintain stable populations of insects used for biological control in other cultures, like Campyloma verbosi and Dicephus hesperus, a predator of whiter flies. A number of pest Lepidoptera species, including the stalk borer and gray hair streak, also use V. thapsus as a host plant. Control of the plant, when desired, is best managed via mechanical means such as hand pulling and hoeing, preferably followed by sowing of native plants. Animals rarely graze it because of its irritating hairs, and liquid herbicides require surfactants to be effective, as the hair causes water to roll off the plant, much like the lotus effect. Burning is ineffective, as it only creates new bare areas for seedlings to occupy. G. tetram and Cuculia verbasi usually have little effect on V. thapsus populations as a whole. Goats and chickens have also been proposed to control mullein. Effective contact herbicides include glyphosate, triclopine sulfuromturon methyl. Ground herbicides, like dbuthiurin, are also effective, but recreate bare ground and require repeated application to prevent regrowth. Uses Great mullein has been used since ancient times as a remedy for skin, throat, and breathing ailments. It has long had a medicinal reputation especially as an astringent and emollient, as it contains mucilage, several saponins, coumarin and glycosides. Diazorides recommended it for diseases of the lung and it is now widely available in health and herbal stores. Non-medical uses have included dyeing and making torches. Equals medical uses equals. Diazorides first recommended the plant 2000 years ago, against pulmonary diseases, and this has remained one of its primary uses, especially against cough. Leaf decoctions or herbal teas were used for expectoration, consumption, dry cough, bronchitis, sore throat and hemorrhoids. Leaves were also smoked against pulmonary ailments, a tradition that in America was rapidly transmitted to Native American peoples. The Zuni people, however, used the plant in poultices of powdered root applied to sores, rashes and skin infections. An infusion of the root is also used to treat athlete's foot. The combination of expectorant saponins and emollient mucilage makes the plant particularly effective for cough. All preparations meant to be drunk have to be finely filtered to eliminate the irritating hairs. Oil from the flowers was used against catars, colics and, in Germany, earaches, frostbite, eczema and other external conditions. Topical application of various V. thapsus based preparations was recommended for the treatment of warts, boils, carbuncles, hemorrhoids, and chilblains, amongst others. Recent studies have found that great mullein contains glycyazine compounds with bactericide and potential anti tumoral action. These compounds are concentrated in the flowers. The German Commission E sanctioned medicinal use of the plant for catars. It was also part of the national formulary in the United States and United Kingdom. The plant's leaves, in addition to the seeds, have been reported to contain rot known, although quantities are unknown. Equals other uses equals, like many ancient medicinal plants, great mullein was linked to witches, although the relationship remained generally ambiguous, and the plant was also widely held to ward off curses and evil spirits. The seeds contain several compounds that are toxic to fish, and have been widely used as piscicide for fishing. The flowers provide dyes of bright yellow or green, and have been used for hair dye. The dried leaves and hair were made into candle wicks, or put into shoes to help with insulating them. The dried stems were also dipped into suet or wax to make torches. Due to its weedy capacities, 
the plant, unlike other species of the genus, is not often cultivated. The stalk can also be dried as a spindle for making fire either by hand drill or bow drill. Notes. References. Equals bibliography equals Watts, Donald. Elsevier's Dictionary of Plant Names and Their Origin. Amsterdam, Elsevier Science. ISBN 0-444-50356-0. External links, verbascom.org, the type specimen of Verbascom Mapsus, Microphotographies of Great Mullin, Seeds Picture from the UBC Collection, a page with pictures of some very tall specimens.